Hello, this is Mrs. Ward, and I'm going to go over examples one and two from the 5.6 notes. So just to remind you what we had finished in class is we had the equation f of x is equal to 2x to the third minus 3x squared. We said that it was a cubic function, and based on the fact that it was a cubic function, we identified the parent function will be a graph that looks something like this. Remember, the lead coefficient is positive. And since it's raised to null power, that means you start low and then end high. Uh, then we went and we found the x-intercepts. We did both sets of intercepts. We found the x-intercept setting y equal to 0. And we got 0 and 3 halves. And we plotted those two points here, right there. And then we found the y-intercept where we put 0 in for x. We also got 0, so that's why there's that small little green dot in there is because we put that in as well. Now what I'm going to do is I am, then we talked about continuity, and we said it was a continuous function. The domain was from negative infinity to positive infinity. And we said the limits at infinity, since there are no vertical asymptotes, the limit as x approaches infinity, since we have this end behavior, uh, x, this as x approaches infinity, and that's what this is saying as x approaches infinity. This graph is going up, so we said over here we're going to end going up. And then when I start, when I go to negative infinity, I start down. So when I'm looking at this graph here, I'm, I know that I'm going to start from the down direction there. So I'm going to come like this way, do whatever I do, and then end high. So we then we found the increasing and decreasing intervals. We found the first derivative, which was 6x squared minus 6x. We found our critical numbers to be 0 and 1 by setting the first derivative equal to 0. Uh, the first derivative is never undefined, so we didn't get anything like that. And then we were working on the extrema. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make that table. And when I make the table, I'm going to put my critical numbers in there of 0 and 1. I'm going to pick test point values. So let's say I pick uh, negative one, ne one half, and let's say positive two. Then to find out whether it's increasing or decreasing, I'm going to take that test point and put it into my first derivative. And I just really care if it's positive or negative. Well, this ends up being 12, I think. So that ends up being positive. Then when I do the first derivative at one half, that ends up being negative. And then when I take my first derivative at two, that's gonna be 24 minus 12, which is positive. So when my first derivative is positive, that means it's increasing. When my first derivative is negative, that means it's decreasing. So I'm going to say that my function is increasing. From negative infinity to zero, and then again from one to positive infinity. And I'm going to say my function is decreasing. in the interval of zero to one. So I could go back up here to my graph and I could label that. Like, let's say, let's color code. Let's say I have highlighters, I love highlighters. I think I said that once or twice. Increasing is here and here. And that's when my function is increasing. So if I stick with the yellow highlighter, I'm just gonna do it down here from, zero from negative infinity to zero in this interval here i'm going to be de increasing and then starting at one i start increasing again and then switching highlighters to different color let's use green if i go back down here my function is decreasing from the zero to one so in here so if i go back up here I'm going to remind myself that in just this tiny little interval is when my function is decreasing. So now let's uh, go and it wants me to find the extrema. So let's find the extrema. So when I find the extrema, that means I'm taking my critical numbers and well, let's identify whether they're max or min. So here for the zero, 
um, increasing, 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 hit that, that critical number and I start to decrease. So I'm going to have a relative max at X is equal to zero. To find that max, I'm going to take F of zero. So I'm going to put that into my original equation, which would be two times zero to the third. Oh, that's minus. Minus three times X squared. And that's going to end up being zero. So I have a relative max at zero. Then here, going back here, I'm decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. I hit this one and I start increasing. So I'm going to have a relative min at that one. And so F of one, put that in, it's going to be two times one to the third minus three times one squared. So that's two minus three, which will be negative one. So I have the order pair, let's see, order pair, one, negative one, which I don't think I've graphed yet. And I have the other order pair, zero, zero, which I've graphed quite a few times. So I'm going to go here and add those two points to my graph. Zero, zero again is going to be there. And then the other one was one, negative one. So I'm going to do right there. I'm going to have that point right there. So that's what I've identified with my first derivative. And this zero, zero is going to be a relative max. So it's like I'm going to come from here. I'm going to hit that point. And then I'm probably going to go down, hit this point, and then start going back up. Okay, I'm on a, not a very neat graph, but you get the general gist. Okay, the next one, I want to find my concavity intervals. In other words, I want to find out when I'm concaving up and when I'm concaving down, which means I have to find my second derivative. So my second derivative is going to be the derivative of the first derivative. So my second derivative is going to be 12x minus 6. I think I remembered my numbers right. 12x minus 6. Now I'm going to find the integrals, so I'm going to find my hypercritical numbers, which means I'm going to set the second derivative equal to 0. So I'm going to say 12x minus 6 is equal to 0. So x is equal to a positive 1 half. So my points of inflection are going to be f of 1 half. I'll get that in a second. And then here, I'm going to find the concave intervals. So here's one half. And then I'm going to pick test point numbers. Let's say I pick, let's do zero, because zero is easy. And let's do one. And now I'm doing my second derivative of zero. And when I put zero in, that ends up being negative six. So this ends up being negative. And then when I put in 1, that ends up being 6, which ends up being positive. So I could say that I'm going to concave up from 1 half to positive infinity. And I'm concaving down from negative infinity to one half. My point of inflection is going to be, I'm gonna put one half into the original equation, so that's gonna be, times one half to the third minus three times one half squared. So I'm going to need a calculator for that. So give me a second, please. So when I put that in my calculator, I get negative one half. So this inflection point, so this will be negative one half. So that inflection point is positive one half, negative one half. So I kind of want to go back up and look at the graph that I just did. 
So I'm going to erase what I filled in there because I had the general just, but now I have a better idea of what's going on. So let's get rid of this. So at one half, so at one half, negative one half right here is my inflection point. So here I'm going to come from below. I'm going to hit this relative max. I'm going to go down right here at this one half. I stop concaving down and start concaving up. I hit this negative one and then I continue up. And that is going to be the shape of my graph. All right, let's move on to the next one. So the example f of x is equal to x squared plus x over x squared minus. Now I notice I gave you the first derivative and the second derivative, so you don't have to figure it out. Uh, what type of function it is going to be a rational function because I have a numerator and a denominator. So now I'm going to find my x-intercept. So I'm first going to find my x-intercept, my both intercepts. I'm going to find my x-intercept. That means that's when y is equal to 0. In other words, I'm going to find my 0, so that means I'm going to take the numerator, the x squared plus 1, and I'm going to set that equal to 0. And when I do that, I would get x squared is equal to negative 1. Can't take the square root of a negative number, so there are no zeros. And that also means that there is no x-intercept. In other words, it will never cross the x-axis. Now I'm going to do the y-intercept, which means I make x equal to 0. So I'm doing the y-intercept, so x equal to 0. So any place I have an x, that's going to be equal to 0. So I'm going to end up with 1 over negative 9. So my x-intercept is going to be 0, negative 1 ninth. So 0, negative 1 ninth, something like right down here-ish. I'm going to talk about continuity. When is this function continuous? Well, since it is a rational equation, uh, I'm going to have uh, continuity issues. That's going to happen when my denominator is equal to zero. So it is my domain is going to be when this is going to be all real numbers, except for when my denominator of x squared minus 9 is equal to zero. So x is equal to 3, x is equal to negative 3. So basically my domain is going to be x such that x cannot equal 3, x cannot equal negative 3. Now if I look at my numerator, again we said there were no zeros, the numerator does not factor. So those two restrictions on my domain, I realized they could not simplify, which makes them vertical asymptotes. So I have two vertical asymptotes. <clears throat> one is going to be x is equal to 3. The other one is going to be x is equal to negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and do myself a favor, and I am going to sketch those in. Let's use a highlighter to do that. So at 3 and negative 3, I'm going to put my vertical asymptotes in. So 1, 2, 3. So here's going to be 1. And then at the positive 3, I'm going to have another vertical. Whoa, that's really not hopefully I'll straighten out. Oh, thank you. So those are my two vertical asymptotes, and I'm going to go ahead and put those in. So when I talk about continuity, I said it's continuous except for when x doesn't equal 3, except for when x is equal 3 and x is equal negative 3. Those are the two places where it's discontinuous. My limits at infinity and vertical asymptotes. I found my vertical asymptotes. Now let's talk about these limits, which means I have to know what my horizontal asymptotes are. So I'm going to go back up to this equation, and I see that my equation is, is x squared, x squared. And when I look at this, I notice that my power, whoopsie, I thought it was the highlight. Mm -hmm. uh, my, power, mm, my powers are the same. So it's squared, squared. So I'm going to just look at the coefficients to find my horizontal asymptote. And when I do that, my coefficients are going to be 1 and 1. So my horizontal asymptote 
my horizontal asymptote is going to be y is equal to 1, which means the limits of f of x, this function, I'm not going to rewrite again, as x approaches infinity is going to be 1. And my limits of this function as x approaches negative infinity is also going to be 1. So what I might want to go do myself a favor up here again and switch it to a highlighter. So highlighter. And now my horizontal asymptote, so out here is going to be 1 and 1. Yeah, I tried. I, I tried. I really did try. So I kind of have like a basic boxes to fit my graph in. Now I'm going to find my intervals where the function's increasing or decreasing. That, remind, remember, is when my, I find my first derivative. And my first derivative I wrote down for you. So my first derivative is going to be that negative 20x. over that x squared minus 9, and I believe it's squared. So that's going to be my first derivative, double checking. So now I have to find the places where it's increasing or decreasing. I have to find my critical numbers. So I'm going to find when the first derivative is equal to 0. So I'm going to take that negative 20x, set equal to 0, and I get x is equal to 0. And then I'm going to take my first derivative and find out when it's undefined. And that's going to be when this denominator is undefined, which is going to be x is equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 3 again. Now I'm going to do my table to find out my intervals of increasing and decreasing. So I'm going to have negative 3, 0, and 3. And now I'm putting in my first derivative. And you know what? I didn't pick test points. Let's pick some test points real quick. Let's use, let's say, negative 4, uh, let's say 1, oh, negative 1, whoopsie, positive 1 and positive 4. So now I'm going to do my first derivative. So I just need to know whether it's positive or negative. So I could go into my calculator and, and, and do that, like the such that. So hit control divide, do the negative 20x my numerator and then hit my x squared minus 9 and then I'm going to square this whole thing and then I'm going to get out of there and I'm going to do such that and oops, and let's do it x is equal to, we said negative 4, positive, remember again just carrying if it's positive or negative, and we said negative 1, positive, Why did I do that twice? I don't know. Positive 1. Negative. And positive 4. So it goes positive, positive, negative, negative. So this one was positive. When we did our first derivative here, this one was negative, positive. Did our first derivative here, it was negative. First derivative here, negative. Which means it is increasing. from negative infinity to negative 3, 
union negative 3 to 0 is decreasing from 0 to 3 union 3 to positive infinity. At 3 and negative 3, no. So, so I have to have this break because at negative 3, it's neither increasing or decreasing. I have to have this break at 3 because at 3, it's neither increasing or decreasing. So it's increasing Okay, I'm going to mark those with my highlighter again. I think we used yellow last time for increasing. So I'm increasing here and then here. And then I'm decreasing from here and here. So going up to my graph. So I'm decreasing from 0 to 3. And I'm going to try and make a little break, and then from three on, I'm decreasing, and then I'm increasing from here. Now, when I go to do my extreme up. So if I follow my graph, I'm increasing, increasing, increasing. So I'm going up, going up, going up. I hit this three. Well, it's the vertical asymptote. I'm neither increasing or decreasing, but I still increase. So there's no extreme at negative three. I hit this. I, I'm increasing, increasing, increasing. I hit this zero, and then I start decreasing. So I'm going to have a relative max at x is equal to 0, and then so I decrease, 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 hit this negative 3, I still am decreasing, decreasing, and decreasing. So I only have one extreme. I'm going to have run to max at 0. Going back to the original equation, which is x squared plus 1, so find f of 0, which I, I think I already know because that we put that in, x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 9, and I end up with negative 1 ninth, which I've already plotted that point 0, negative 1 ninth. I plotted that when I found my y-intercept. So, so here it is. That point's already plotted right there. So I already have it. Don't need to plot it again. But I know that that is going to be my relative max. So I'm going to come from below, hit that, and then go start going down. But let's see if I know anything about concavity before I sketch those in. So now concavity intervals is where I go and I look at the second derivative. So my second derivative is going to be that 60x squared plus 3. So let's write that down. Just double checking that I wrote that down correctly. I did. So now I want to find the places where my second derivative is equal to zero, which means that 60 times x squared plus 3 is equal to zero. Divide both sides by 60, you get x squared plus 3 is equal to zero. x squared is equal to negative 3. That's not possible, so I'm not going to have any there. Then I want to find places where my second derivative is undefined. Again, that's going to be when this is equal to 0, so that x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. And that's going to happen if x is equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 3. So I want to see if the concavity changes at those two points, so I'm going to make a table. 
so so I'm putting in negative three I'm putting in three I'm choosing tips points let's choose negative four let's choose zero let's choose positive four so I'm finding the second derivative of negative four so if I put that in my calculator And because x is equal to four, negative four, x is equal to zero, and x is equal to positive four. Positive, negative, positive. So this is positive, negative, positive, which means I'm going to concave down from negative infinity to negative three. Whoopsie, I kind of wrote that wrong. Mm. And then I'm going to concave, oh, I'm sorry, I'm concaving up in that interval. So sorry. I'm concaving up from negative infinity to negative three, and then I'm going to concave up again from three to positive infinity. I'm concaving down from negative three to three. So I could write like here, here I'm concaving up, here I'm concaving down, here I'm concaving up. Let me find that inflection point. I don't think I found that yet. I have two inflection points right now. I do. So I'm going to find f of 3. For my inflection point and I'm going to find f of negative 3. So putting into that original equation which is the x squared plus 1 over the x squared minus 9. Well when I get this it's going to be undefined and this one also is going to be undefined. So that means I'm not going to have any inflection points. So there's no place where my graph will change like the shape from concaving down to concaving up. So when I go up here and graph it, my function's increasing. So based on what I have, I know that I'm concaving down in this middle. So I know that I'm going to come up. I'm going to hit that relative max, which is that point there at 0, negative 1, 9, and then I'm going to go down. The other ones I'm going to be concaving up. I'm going to go based off this horizontal asymptote, and I'm going to go up, and I'm going to concave up, and my function is increasing. So I'm going to do something like that. And then this one also concave up, approach that asymptote, and approach that horizontal asymptote. And that will be the rough sketch of my graph.
All right, well, I hope this helps and we will go over the third example in class.